Pokemon lovers and welcome to a brand new episode of Rating All Pokemon where I, your girl, Hilda, rate a whole bunch of Pokemon every single week. Today we have five guys and they're all right, they're pretty cool. They're pretty cool guys. So I just wanna just wanna start today with a Pokemon. Just thought I'd let you know, you know, what the deal is today in case you didn't know Pokemon. The first Pokemon of today is number 626, Buffalant. Now, Buffalant is an Afro bull. I don't know who thought of this, but I'm, I am, I am loving it. I'm loving it. So the first time I saw Buffalant, I thought, I don't know how to say it, by the way. Buffalant sounds good. Seems good. When I first saw it, I thought it was the going to be the evolution of Tauros. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's because they're both the bullish bull buffalo type creatures. But it's not. It's just like Tauros, a separate Pokemon that is just separate from everything. It's just a cool guy. Now, if you look at it closely, or not closely, I mean, you can see it from a distance. It looks like a disco man. It has a big afro and it actually, its entire concept is based on afros. I don't know why. Buffalant is a normal type, which you could probably guess by looking at it and, you know, just looks like a normal type. The thing with Buffalant is that it has a very, you know, bouncy afro. I don't, okay, listen. This is word by word exactly what Bulbapedia says. Get ready. A territorial Pokemon, it will headbutt anyone that attempts to invade its territory. However, in the anime, it has been known not to attack those with an afro hairstyle. Protected by its afro, which absorbs damage, its headbutts are strong enough to derail a train and send it flying. This afro is, this is a hardcore afro that this guy has and uh, you know, I'm digging it. The only thing that's missing right now is some flared jeans and it's singing Do you remember? 21st night September You know, that song. That was That's what he reminds me of. It's great. I love it. <laughs> so it has this very fluffy fur which absorbs damage. Great. I wish my hair could do that. That would be awesome. And again, they derail trains and for some reason Pokemon just really loves its uh, vehicle facts. So, Buffalant is based on a buffalo and more specifically the American bison. Although the uh, horns it has are really like the side, the side horns uh, are very much like the African buffalo. And you know, the fur on its head resembles, you guessed it, an Afro hairstyle. The German name for Buffalant, I keep forgetting its name. The German name for Buffalant is Biso Funk, which comes from Bison, which is uh, bison and funk, which is funky, which is great. I love it. I never really cared about Buffalant, but right now I am digging it. I'm digging its, you know, its its vibes, its love for everyone that has an afro. Like, that is great. I love it. Uh, so I give Buffalant a four out of five. The next Pokemon for today is number 627, Rufflet. Rufflet? <laughs> Rufflet is known as the Eaglet Pokemon, and you know, I love it when it has, has let at the end. Ducklet, Eaglet, it's so cute. It does look like an eagle, tiny little bald eagle baby. Rufflet has very thick and strong talons, and it uses these to, you know, crush berries and, you know, crack shelter shells so it can suck out its body so it can have something to eat. Thank you for this imagery, Pokemon, love it. It's a very aggressive Pokemon and it likes to provoke any Pokemon that's stronger than itself, including its parents who it likes to attack to gain acceptance and to be a cool, strong eaglet. Now Rufflet is based on the bald eagle, a tiny baby bald eaglet. <laughs> As you may know, the bald eagle is the bird, the animal, uh, that re represents the United States of America. Now its colors are red, white, and blue. It's a big patriot type guy, but it also has a one little feather on its head, which comes from the Native American culture. Now I find that a little bit weird, but 
I guess we'll roll with it. Now the fact that it can crack open nuts and feed itself by doing that comes from parrots, which are the only birds that can actually do that. So that is a bit strange. The German name for rufflet is Geronimatz, which comes from Geronimo, which was a prominent leader and medicine man in a very well-known Apache tribe, which is again kind of weird and cool, mostly weird. And Piepmatz, which comes from little chick, means little chicklet, baby bird. It's great. Rufflet gets a four out of five. At level 54, Rufflet evolves into Braviary. Now Braviary is cool, cool eagle bird. I love, I love Braviary. It can do brave bird. Can it? Probably can. Just made that up, didn't I? Whatever. It can probably do that. Its name is Braviary. It has to. Now, Braviary is a very aggressive Pokemon, but it is aggressive because it um, wants to always protect its friends and its family. And it will go through anything and everything just to protect these loved ones, which is, you know, a good thing and sweet. And it's a brave, strong Pokemon that represents freedom. The country of the free. It is known as the hero of the skies because, you know, of the protection and all that kind of shit. A lot of the Pokedex entry talk about how it can send a car flying again with the fucking vehicles. Pokemon, calm down. <laughs> Braviary is known for its braveness. Is that a word? Braveness? Doesn't matter. When it has a lot of scars on its chest, it will gain a lot of respect from its peers. And when it has scars on its back, it will actually be shunned because who gets hit in the back? Only idiots, obviously. So like I said, Braviary is based on the bald eagle. The color scheme is red, white and blue. American flag and the fact that it has all these feathers around its head represent a Native American war bonnet. And these war bonnets are... I don't know how to say that. That sounds really weird. War... War... War bonnet? War bonnet? Whatever. You know, head feathers. These are actually things that are very, very hard to achieve or to gain inside Native American culture. Receiving a feather is like crazy. If you did that, you, you really earned something great. A lot of Native American people only earn two feathers in their life. So having an entire headgear made of feathers means you are a very brave and good person. So I guess Braviary is that. Although I still stand by the fact that having the American flag pride theme clash with the Native American theme at the same time kind of freaks me out. That's a weird combination of things. I mean, looking at history, but... It does look very cool. Braviary's name obviously comes from Brave and Aviary, which is a big bird cage. And in Mandarin Chinese, its name literally means warrior eagle. And I love it. I completely forgot to mention that Braviary can only be male. So can Rufflet, obviously. And the reason for that is that in Native American tribes, only male men, male men can um, receive these feathers of pride. <laughs> That's not the right word. You know what I mean. I think Braviary is really cool and I give it a 5 out of 5. The next Pokemon for today is kind of Rufflet's counterpart. It is number 629, Volibi. Now, Volibi is known as the diapered Pokemon, which doesn't sound very cool or tough or great. And today, while I was doing my research, I found out that it's wearing a skull as its diaper. I always thought it was an eggshell, but it turns out that its legs are in the eyes and then there's a little nose on its belly and it's kind of creepy. It's a little fat bird in a diaper. What? So Volibi is like a vulture. It likes to go after weak creatures, although vultures usually go after dead creatures, but don't worry about that. And Volibi is a female-only species. Again, they're the counterpart of our boys, Braviary and Rufflet. Pokemon Ultra Sun says, Mandibuzz, which is the evolution, uh, gives it the bones it wears. Volibi's wings are short, so it can't fly yet, but it jumps around dreaming of wide open skies. That is just cute. Volibi is based on a vulture chick. Is that known as a vulturelet? Vulturelet? No? Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> There's not really much else to say, although it does remind me of the traditional cartoonish depiction of, you know, cavemen and cavewomen. You know, the little bones and stuff. 
I don't know. Ken Sugimori said that Volibi and its evolution were only added to the game late in the process. So it was like a last minute little, they were like, we need some more birds, more birds. And then they added more birds. Volibi's name comes from the words vulture and lullaby. And the Mandarin Chinese name literally means vulture child, which I also love. I give Volibi a four out of five. At level 54, Volibi evolves into Mandibuzz. Now Mandibuzz is, you know, you can see the cave person resemblance now, right? The little bone in the hair, like pebbles from the Flintstones. Mandibuzz is also wearing bones, which I only just found out today too. Around its waist, it's wearing a skirt that is made out of teeth from a, a sharp creature. <laughs> now, Mandibuzz creates nests out of the bones it finds, or the bones of, you know, praise it has consumed. Now, it mostly eats Cubone, which makes me sad because Cubone already has a really rough life and now Mendibus comes and swoops fucking Cubone from the floor and eats it and then uses its bones for its nest. What piece of garbage. Why do you do this to this small, helpless creature without a mother? Ugh. Pokemon Sun says, they adorn themselves beautifully with bones. This is supposedly an effort to attract males, but no male Mandibuzz has ever been found. That is just, that is just very sad. <laughs> now, Mandibuzz is based on a vulture, the old world vulture. Mostly looks like a lappet faced vulture. Don't know what any of that means. I don't know anything about vultures. They're scary as fuck. And the way it looks also bears resemblance to, you know, cavemen and stuff, which I already said. The row of teeth that it's wearing resemble an apron because it's, you know, it's a mother. Mothers wear aprons, always. <laughs> it's not, it's not sexism. Pfft. What do you mean? Mandibuzz's name comes from the words mandible and buzzard, which is weird because it's a vulture and not a buzzard, but okay. Sure. I mean, I like it, but it also makes me very, very sad that it eats Cubone, the poor Cubone. So I'm gonna give it a four out of five out of spite. My voice just died. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, guys. Uh, let me know if you're Team Braviary or Team Mandibuzz. That was fun. This was a fun episode. These guys were fun. Fun times. F is for friends who do stuff together. U is for you and me. And is for something. I don't know what. Recommend me to all of your friends and have a very good week. I had fun today. I'm very warm right now, so I need to open a door. Goodbye.